Ahoy, this is David Perry and my continuing series of interviews with colleagues, clients, artists, friends around the world, talking about how we get from what I call the great pause of this year of COVID into the great return. And I'm very happy to be in the Zoom room with the Director of Education for the nonprofit Letterform Archive in San Francisco, perhaps the only institution in San Francisco that was able to go virtual, was already planning to go virtual, but is still moving into a new brick and mortar home by the end of the year. Please welcome Grendel Lockfist. Welcome. Hi, thank you, David. It's a pleasure to be here. So what has this year been like for someone doing education around font and the history of writing and communication in this strangest of years? Well, it's kind of interesting because um, we had, it had long been my goal to uh, offer classes virtually as well as in our brick and mortar classroom. And uh, it's, uh, this year has been, uh, be careful uh, what you wish for because you might get it faster than you think. And um, so we went from at the beginning of the year thinking, oh yeah, maybe we'll dabble, we'll try out a virtual class this year and see how that goes to all of a sudden, okay, here we go. Everything's online now. Um, we did have to make some adjustments to our curriculum um, with, uh, so, just to, to, to give a little background here, I'm education director at Letterform Archive, and we have a year-long postgraduate certificate program in type design. And our students were um, in the middle of their second term of this three trimester program when COVID hit. And so we had only a, a, a little bit to go in that term when we had to shift to virtual programming. Um, and then we worked with the students to figure out what we should do next, right? So we had originally anticipated, well, maybe things will go back to normal by the time we have our third term. They didn't. So now we are, we're looking, we, we all agreed to postpone our third term until the fall when we assumed we'd be going back to normal. And um, now we're looking at a virtual third term. It's interesting. Every time I hear anyone use the word normal, they all do this now. It's normal. Oh, right. I, I, think it's, I, think, I think it may even become the new American Sign Language version of normal. People are just going to do that. As a teacher, as an educator, what has been the most challenging part of this? Has it been the technology? Or has it been navigating the relationships and curriculum adjustment that has now by force been forced upon you? Well, the, the thing about Letterform Archive and our program that is so appealing to students is that we are the home of over 50,000 original works of graphic design history. And part of the, so I, in addition to being education director, I also teach in the program, I teach type history and theory. And I usually give a slide lecture for about half the time. And then I bring out physical objects of graphic design history to show the students. So the students can look through them and see the kinds of uh, original pieces that we've been discussing in the lecture. And they actually get to hold them and flip through them and blah, 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 and ask questions. And so that part is not reproducible. I mean, fortunately we have the online archive. So at least students can zoom in really closely on the artifacts and even see like the, the pores in the vellum um, or the, the little uh, fibers in the paper practically. But it's still not quite the same experience as being able to flip through, um, you know, a 17th century manuscript or printed piece on your own. When do you think you will be able to do that? Pick up that piece of parchment and flip a rare book with your carefully placed white gloves again for Letter from Archive. I know you're moving into your new space sometime after Labor Day this summer, but when do you think you'll be able to welcome students back? Okay, so first of all, I have to disabuse you of the notion that we use white gloves. You just wash your hands with soap oh. and water. And that's actually shown to be a better way to handle archival materials, believe it or not, because with the gloves that may 
improperly fit one's hands, you're liable to, um, you're more likely to tear something or catch the glove on something. Whereas if you just wash your hands and dry them prior to handling the material, then you've got much better control and you're not going to transfer anything. So Letterform Archive was already COVID ready by washing your hands. That's exactly right. We had a little, <laughs> little joke there. Um, uh, anyways, uh, to get back to the other part of your question, who knows, right? The students, we polled the students and they said, uh, in addition to polling ourselves, and they basically said, we're not really keen on returning to a classroom situation until there's a vaccine. So there we go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have you lost, gained, or kept the status quo with your number of students? Well, at this point, I think we're, we're on track. We actually, we accepted a full class of 18 students, which was, um, we, we took on more students than we have in the past for this year's class because we thought we would have already moved to the new location, which is much larger. Well, we hadn't. So the students have been already putting up with a little bit of, you know, a tight squeeze in the, in the actual classroom. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I mean, a couple students have said that if we were to return to a classroom, um, with prior to having a vaccine, they would not be able to attend because they are either caring for or living with somebody who is um, in a risk, higher risk group, right? So those students said, you know, I, we won't be able to attend unless you do a virtual class. Then we've had a couple other students who are like, well, I just don't feel like I'm a good virtual learner. But our term hasn't started yet, so we'll see who decides, you know, we may lose a few students, probably the, those in the latter category, if we lose anybody at all. But we're really trying to work, we have a class of 18 students, so we're trying to work with everybody individually to see how we can meet their needs. So when did you become, to be colloquial and use alliteration, a font fan? Um, ah, <laughs> a font fan. Oh, I've been a font fan for quite some time. Um, so before, um, let's see, I, uh, I ran a, an offset press for uh, over 20 years at Inkworks Press in Berkeley, mm -hmm. uh, which has now um, been closed since 2015. But um, when I was running the press, you everyone's a design critic right and so i'm printing all these things from different designers and checking them out and evaluating them judging them etc so i would say that that part of my history really contributed to um my type fandom um in addition to that when i was a uh, student um when I was learning how to uh, operate an offset press, I also took some typography classes because that was part of the certificate program at City College where I studied. And I liked that a lot. And I thought, woo, maybe I could design a typeface. So I, I took a, a class in the program Fontographer, which was the, um, the type design program at the time. Now it's, uh, we have other tools at our disposal um, that are maybe a little easier to learn. I'm not sure. Anyways, I did design a couple typefaces. Yeah, I was gonna say, so what, what is the Grendel Latkvist font? Do we have it? Well, I, no, there, I, I never published because I, I can't, I'm, I'm very politically uh, progressive maybe even radical. And so I thought when I had developed a couple typefaces, um, I was like, ooh, what's the measure of success? Mm -hmm. You know, it's like to, um, to sell your typeface to um, the Gap or, you know, some multi-chase bank or whatever, like, ooh, maybe that's not for me. But I didn't stop loving typefaces or encouraging the development of typefaces. I just didn't see myself um, in that role. However, 
I'm a calligrapher also, and I love black letter. So that's one thing. Maybe someday I'll return to the font design aspect of this program and do my own black letter typeface. So describe your, well, there is no typical student anywhere for any curriculum, but in general, who are the people that come to you and to Letter From Archive to learn this? Are they people who are working for things like The Gap or Apple, filmmakers, creative directors, or just students who want to take part in this or all of the above? So we have a variety of students uh, from different walks of life, but in general, I would say they're mostly graphic designers who are not necessarily looking to become type designers, but they want to add another tool to their graphic design toolbox. You know, because some clients may come and wish for a custom logo or um, even a custom typeface and they can say, oh yeah, now I can offer that to you as well. What is your, I mean, this is gonna be a hard question for you, I'm sure. Is there one favorite artifact or document in the collection of Letter From Archive that every time you see either virtually or reality, you say, wow, that's, that's why I love this. I swoon. Yes. 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 You know, we, we actually had a conversation about this amongst the archivists, as I call my coworkers. Um, and we were asked, what would you save in the event of a catastrophe, right? What was the one item that you would save from the collection? And I was just like, don't ask me that. How can I single out one item out of this magnificent collection of beautiful works of graphic design history? Um, but I will say that Rudolf Koch is one of my very favorite calligraphers and type designers, and I would save anything that he had done, right? Especially original works of calligraphy, because that is irreplaceable. Now, I remember a few years ago, my husband and I were in uh, Casino, Italy, and we went to the museum at Monte Cassino. And I forget it, I used to know it because I was in Catholic school, learned at least one thing from that, Latin. <laughs> Over the door in Latin, it says, where it was, as it was. It was completely rebuilt after the horrible bombing of World War II, but all the incredible, precious, illuminated texts had been taken away before the bombing. A lot of people don't realize that. So even though Monte Cassino was completely destroyed, when it was rebuilt, all the beautiful texts and whatnot from the Renaissance were brought back. And I remember looking at some of those texts and thinking, how can you reproduce that? And you know, for me, you know, seeing some of those texts, a letter from archive or that cuneiform tablet, it, it would be hard to choose what to save. I think we'd all have our pockets full as we ran out in case of a disaster. Right, pretty much. That's what I said. Like, I'm going to need a coat with a lot of pockets if I'm going <laughs> to So in our last few minutes, talk to me about what is coming next for Letter From Archive. Hopefully we're on track for moving into the new space in San Francisco's Dog Patch neighborhood sometime in September. And then I understand there is a new exhibit coming after the turn of the new year about Bauhaus. So talk to me a little bit about that. Well, the... Um, the exhibit is is out of my hands a little bit. I'm looking forward to it. And, you know, we recently celebrated the 100th anniversary of the Bauhaus. So that was, ties in a little bit with the exhibit, um, which is coming a little bit later than that. Um, but the, the new, the move to the new location is just going to be fantastic. I've seen it um, in various states of progress. It's taken a little longer than we hoped to complete the move. COVID didn't help, let's just say that. Um, but the classroom, for instance, is much larger than our old classroom. So our previous location was kind of cobbled together out of three different separate units in a condominium complex. And this is now intentional, right? So we were able to find a space that was much more suited to our needs in terms of um, housing the collection, but then also offering a lovely classroom space, gallery space, um, and a reading room, in addition to a, a good, you know, uh, workspace for the archivists, which now we're going to have to modify a little bit due to COVID, 
should we be able to safely return but it's the classroom itself is just like got all these lovely windows giving us a great western view and lots of light huge wall of blackboard for sketches or demonstrations and um, lots of space for the students to spread out even you know covid should mm -hmm. should we be able to return to the classroom in a semi safe situation they will be able to space out adequately um it's really going to be lovely well you know as i've heard rob saunders your your founder say the letter form archive is about serendipitous discovery and about radical accessibility with with those two concepts in mind is there anything you'd like to leave us with as far as closing thoughts about why this work is so important and why it's so important to you personally grendel well, the radical accessibility part is super important. And I, I really admire um, the way Letterform Archive has made these documents available to anybody who wants to see them. Whereas normally they would have been sequestered in a private collection or maybe in, a, you know, in the stacks in, in a museum. Um, inaccessible. And here, not only can you uh, can you see them? You can physically interact with the objects and that makes it radical. And one thing we have um, been focusing on lately is increasing our accessibility even more to populations that have been traditionally underserved by uh, museums and archives, etc. And so we've been doing some outreach to local high schools um, in our new neighborhood in the Dog Patch Bayview Hunters Point area um, to see if we can bring our program and our, once it's safe, right, bring our books and our artifacts into those classrooms to um, just expose the kids to this magnificent um, archive and piece of history that they may not normally get access to. And we've also been working with the Prison University Project. Um, we obviously can't go to San Quentin now, but we are going to be um, uh, sharing our video archive with them as well, as soon as we get the videos captioned, which is another aspect of radical accessibility that we had, um, we're now focusing on is making our archive more accessible to everybody. Well, thank you so much for keeping on, keeping on during this most challenging of years. We've been speaking with Grendel Lochtfuss, Director of Education for Letterform Archive. Here's to Letterform Archive and its continuing commitment to radical accessibility. This is David Perry. Oh.